There's no secret. There's no shortcut. Everything that is alive is conscious. Be silent. Be still and know God. Until you feel worthy, it ain't going to happen. Rigorous, ruthless, disciplined focus. You have to get to a place where you can work on yourself. If you are looking to live at the tip of the spear when it comes to health optimization, join my private membership group, Fully Optimized Health. Dot com and get the latest and greatest on hormone optimization, peptides, fitness, fat loss, and most importantly, raising your vibration. Again, go over to fullyoptimizedhealth.com and sign up today. Hey guys and gals, what is going on? It's Jay Campbell. And of course, you're watching the Jay Campbell podcast. And I'm very excited to be joined in my virtual StreamYard studio with my very good friend, the one and only Dr. Rob Kamenark. Rob, what's up, bro? Hey, how are you? Good, Good to, to see, see you, man. Yeah. So Rob is uh, evolving like all of us in this day of the bioweapon. Uh, One of the things I've been talking to people about is getting back to the basics of health and wellness. And what is it that you really need to have in check to stay healthy, regardless of what hormones you're taking or medications yeah. you're taking, but those areas of Where's, how's your sleep? How's your sleep? What's your exercise schedule look like? What are your restorative practices, meaning prayer, meditation, Tai Chi, yoga? What are you doing to reduce stress? Yeah. Are you running your diagnostics, your, your laboratory? Are you looking at your intracellular nutrient values? Um, if needed, DEXA scans, carotid ultrasounds, CT angiography of the heart, depending on your age. What's your nutrition look like? Are you using different strategies, intermittent fasting? Are you food rotating? What the, the, your, your major food groups look like? Uh, and then finally, where, where you live. How is where you live affecting your health? What, what's epigenetics? What's being turned on or turned off by the area of the country or state where you, where you live? And when you've got all those areas in, in balance and working, that's when you'll see a lot of numerous health improvements and where then adding in hormones and peptides are really going to make a substantial difference. Yeah. And, and, and the truth is, Rob, is that the last two and a half years, a lot of people have lost their way, right? Like, I mean, you know, with the fear and the programming uh, and the stay at home you know, and social distancing. I mean, on and on it goes the mask. I mean, think about how bad, I mean, you know, cause you and I were in on this at the very beginning. I remember we did that podcast with Rick and you know, the mask, what, think about what masks did to people. I mean, yeah. and now the kids with like, you know, the breathing in the bacteria. And, uh, I mean, it's, it insane. certainly feels, it certainly, I've seen some really strange things over the last few weeks. And I've seen, it seems like individual tolerance of certain things has really dropped off and almost like yeah. the basics of human decency. I right. saw something actually today that the last time I saw it was in 2001 in the airport in Vegas. It was the last time I saw something like this. I was actually in a restaurant for lunch and a businessman, like so in a restaurant, he cleared his throat, <laughs> brought up a loogie, and spit it on the table. Are you serious? And I, did, I was like so stunned by the behavior. Because first, I was caught off guard by the... <laughs> and I'm like, well, that was disgusting in and of itself. But then he turned around and just spit it on the table. <laughs> I would fall over. <laughs> I don't like, are you kidding me <coughs> but, uh, you know i had a, a pretty laid back quiet lunch and we were there for a little while it wasn't 20 minutes later he did it again some other guy came in and did the same thing except this time he spit on his plate was an older person 40s no dude yeah 40 40 year old male and I, I, the last time I saw anything like that was in the Las Vegas airport where this guy was just obliterated. He'd been out all night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He was spitting loogies around the airport. <laughs> and I was like, my other thing. I'm like, we're in a restaurant, like, tabled food. Like, uh, I'm kind well, of. I mean, look, yeah. it goes back to what you just said. People are they're pushed to the edge or they've been pushed to the brink 
I mean, look, man, I, 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 where, who was I just talking to or, or, or uh, messaging recently about it? And the guy said to me point blank, he's like, look, man, I'm actually, blo- I'm blown away that we haven't degenerated into madness yet. After everything that's happened with all of the insanity and, you know, the states, the blue states and their pushes and stuff. I mean, bro, right now in California, and again, we don't want to talk about it, but there's a emergency, a state of emergency due to the MP. Mm-hmm. So it's like, you know, human decency, like, you you know, you just brought up, I mean, you know, that's like, clearly people are just at a place where it's like, they don't even have it anymore. You know, how are people still functioning without degenerating? That's, you know, that's what the guy said to me. He was like, I would assume we would have already been in like chaos and riots and some of the states would have already collapsed at this point, but somehow the matrix is still going. Hmm. Yeah, I feel like at times we're just, uh, like when I'm out and about in public, which isn't very often, I kind of guard my time and the things that I do very, very carefully. Everything is energy and frequency. I spend my time very carefully in in the people that I'm around, uh, which is part of, you know, restorative practices, eliminating toxicities, whether they be individual toxicities, because poor nutrition habits, a lot of soda, cakes, cookies, candy, chips, that kind of stuff, eliminating that. And then relationships, where are you spending your time? I try. And if I just sense that you're at least bit toxic. Of course. I well, yeah. I mean, I mean to that though. I, and I actually got rid of somebody in my practice the other day. I said, I'm not going to have that in here. You're not going to talk to my staff that way. And uh, I'm just not going to have it later. Yeah. So you got to go. I, yeah. I don't have time for that. Well, I mean, like, you know, back to what you were saying originally, um, dude, Monica and I go out and we don't go out at all, like go out, out. But you know, when we were in Mexico, we're at these nice, you know, five-star resorts and like you're at the pool or you're at the restaurant, you know, when we were in Punta de Mita, it's very, very uh, isolated, right? It's 20 minutes from like the first store or restaurant. So it's a, it's an all inclusive. It's an amazing place, but bro, no, I, I mean, there are so few people now that aren't fat and inflamed on this mm. planet. I mean, like if you're in shape, mm-hmm. you know, and I'm not saying like me and Monica are obviously the, the abnormal type, but like there are very few people that even like remotely care about their fitness anymore. I mean, it's mind blowing to me. I mean, I mean, and the difference in just five years is stark. I mean, very few people remotely take care of themselves anymore. I mean, that's kind of where we digest it. It's insane. And, and I would, I would agree with that in the last five years. Uh, the number of people I see with diabetes and insulin oh. resistance is it's pretty much everybody that walks through the door. It's very rare that I don't see somebody with that issue. Uh, it, it's yeah, pretty commonplace. I mean, so think about that. Like who cares about the V or the C if everybody who's an adult now over the age of 45 has type two diabetes, they're already one foot in the grave. It's very predictable, the laboratory that I see, Um, insulin resistance, homocysteinemia, depleted vitamin B levels, D levels, um, low gonadotropins, low hormones, estrogen, progesterone, testosterone. It's it's all all bottomed out, and and many of them are 30, 40, 50, 100 pounds overweight. Right. Uh, right. poor, really poor dietary habits. And the pandemic certainly didn't help for a lot of people. Some people, the pandemic had focused them and they, you know, got in great shape and used that time that way. And then other people just went down the slide even further. Right. A lot of, a lot of post finasteride syndrome, a lot of post. Oh, well, that's also, we know why that's also being yeah. activated from the podcast that you and I have done. I mean, we know it decays the cells. Yeah, seeing a lot of that and a lot of really clinical depression associated with it. Dude, that is crazy, man. I mean, like you talked about it before, but just, you know, mention it because it's always a hot button topic. Like what is your preferred strategy now to take somebody to withdraw somebody off of uh, a finasteride or propecia? It's definitely an individualized process because not everybody's the same. They come in in various stages. And sometimes I get people that are so clinically depressed, it's treating the depression first. Right. <laughs> it's it's a, yeah. So um those can be very difficult recalcitrant type cases to you know individuals to deal with. But the vast majority of what I see anymore is um 
middle-aged men and women with insulin resistance, type two diabetes, overweight, or really young, 19 to 26, no testosterone levels from having been on anxiolytics, antidepressants, ADD, ADHD medications. Um, uh, uh, I see a lot of that. That's crazy, man. I mean, it's, it's, I mean, it's, 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 it's upsetting, but I mean, like, you know, all we can do is just, you can control yourself and you can obviously control your patients as best as you can, you know, and, you know, some people, like you said, are, are still listening, but it is definitely getting worse. Um, and, 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 you know, I, so for me, what I see, cause I'm not obviously advising patients like you are, but I, I see people just getting dumber. And it's also, you know, as you know, you know, it, there's obviously a very stark, stark correlation to the technology, mm. you know, People allow the technology to do their thinking. There's no discernment. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the hey Siri, hey Google, hey Alexa. So they don't think. And and you know, it just it, it it's just getting like to a place where like people are so inherently lazy. You know what I mean? Like they don't even really want you, they don't want to do the extra thinking. They would rather just send an email and say, you know, to the guru or the person that they're messaging or whatever saying, Hey, can you just answer it for me? Whether I, you know, when it's like, if I read one more sentence, it's there for me, but it's, it, you know, again, people have just gotten to a place where it's like, everybody's just so inherently lazy, you know, they don't want to take an extra step. Like you can tell them what to do. Um, but it doesn't matter. Um, what are, what's it like for you now? Like with the younger guys, are you still seeing it? Is it just as bad? I mean, from a standpoint of like, you got, you're still getting all the younger guys come in and saying, man, I have no testosterone. Um, I, I do. And it seems to me, uh, the ones that are doing a lot of self-experimentation that get themselves in trouble, they're usually the more difficult individuals to work with because they'll yeah. just have a lot more problems. They've taken different medications and pulverized them, turned them into creams, applied them in different places. Oh, they do all kinds of things. And then, you know, when I find out, uh, the young men that I see that have been on ADD, ADHD medication since like they were eight and now they're in their early twenties, they actually respond really well to therapy. Um, those are, it's really gratifying to work with them because if the changes within three months, yeah. they're just, yeah. they're, di they're completely different. Their thinking's different. Their attitude's different. The way they carry themselves, body composition changes very rapidly. So it's definitely gratifying to work with them and see the change and, and they, and to get them off these, these medications that do a lot of damage. Are you seeing, um, cause I recently talked to a guy and I can't remember what it was. He was telling me. And he, he was actually one of the people that was like, made me write the, do the video that I did on SARMs. You know, I recently hired a new YouTube guy. And so like my videos are uh, much better edited and, you know, thumbnails and all that stuff they do. But um, he's telling me that he's seeing, he's seeing patients come in that are using SARMs, younger guys, you know, in oh. their mid to late twenties. And they are the worst. He says, I have, I've seen the, some of the worst blood work that, that I've yep. ever seen in my life from guys on SARMs. Yeah, I, I don't know of any, myself included, or any of my colleagues, you know, that, that you know as well, um, that use any of the selective androgen receptor blockers. They, they cause more problems. Uh, they cause more damage than, than good things. I mean, they do nothing. I mean, they literally stay, definitely stay away from them. I mean, I mean, I mean, you know, this guy again, who, you know, but he was like, they destroy hepatic function. Mm -hmm. They, they absolutely, he's like, I've seen uh, LDLs crashed from them. Um, you know, HDL, like everything. He's you like, get an inversion. HDL goes down, LDL goes exactly. up, glycerides go up. I've seen hepatic steatitosis. You'll see all kinds of crazy things that happen with, with these and they'll do damn damage to the to the uh hypothalamic pituitary gonadal yeah. access as well right. definitely want to stay away they're in a group as far as i'm going to buterol dnp arms just dnp forget. there are people still, it's still out that? there it's still out there mm -hmm. yeah fuck dude i know it's DMP, crazy they're literally <laughs> using bug juice it's only got a it's brain. only got a skull and crossbones on the bottle and says toxic to humans but you know, can you imagine these kids reading these forums, listening to these fucking so-called gurus telling them that, Hey man, you're fat. You just need three days of DMP. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Three but, days you know, again, it's really, if you focus on those five areas of your health and wellness, right. And it, it, it's not as hard as people think it's putting into action. The major categories of everyone's life, 
What does your sleep look like? Yep. Do you have good sleep hygiene? Very are, you, are, are you getting in the rack between 10 and 11? Are you killing the lights? You're not on the phone. Uh, you're taking time to relax and prep beforehand. You've, you've gotten everything done. You're brushing your teeth. You're showering. All those good things so that you're getting good recuperative, restorative, regenerative sleep. What does your exercise look like? You should yeah. be getting some form of exercise on a daily basis. Even on your rest days, it should be an active rest day. And are you rotating your exercise plans and switching yeah. it up? Uh, and based on your age, you, be, you should be doing different forms of exercise. And then restorative practices. What are you doing on a daily basis to relieve your stress? Do you have some passion or some hobby that uh, helps to get you away from the stresses of everyday life of running a household and kids and right. finances and all those things. Right. Is it prayer? Is it meditation? Is it Tai Chi? Is it yoga? Is it getting on your bike and cycling? And then running your diagnostics twice a year. Yeah. Some things only need to be done once a year or every other year, but are you running your labs and getting the appropriate laboratory done to monitor things? monitor where you're at in therapies and what your body's doing so you can track things over time are you running intracellular nutrient tests so you can see what your vitamins minerals and antioxidants look like at a cellular level um if it's something that needs to be done because of your health history you're male over 40 have you had a ct calcium score have you had a ct angio angiogram 64 128 slice have you done your carotid ultrasounds have you done your DEXA scans and, and taken a look at your hips and your spine and, and, and uh, body composition and evaluate for osteopenia and osteoporosis? I'm actually concerned about DEXA because I was literally, I can't, I talked to so many people, but somebody a couple of weeks ago was telling me that DEXA now, the formula is all fucked up because people are so fat. Mm. Yeah, I'm sure they might have to change some things. <laughs> but, here's, here's, but here's the issue. You know, the tables can only handle so much weight and so much size. Right. So I get some, you know, retired professional athletes. I can't get them on the scanner because they're too dang big for the table. Uh, not weight wise, but height wise, bone structure. Right, 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 right. They just don't fit. <laughs> so that yeah. sometimes is an issue. Are you currently suffering from a testosterone deficiency? Are you already using therapeutic testosterone? If you are, go to tottdecoded.com forward slash 10 dash questions and find out the top. 10 questions you need to be asking your doctor about therapeutic testosterone. These are critical questions to ask your doctor. If they can't answer them, you need to find another doctor. Um, and then nutrition, the king of everything, really 95% of the game. What does your nutrition look like? Right. Are you utilizing intermittent fasting on, on a daily basis? Not enough basis? people are. Um, and really, you can look at all the studies. I tell you, and I tell all my clients this: study after study after study shows if you have insulin resistance, skewing your feeding time to 11a to 7p, eating right. your calories inside that time frame, right. eliminating all the cakes, the cookies, the candies, the chips, and the soda, totally. will reverse it and giving your gut a chance to cool off, your brain to make more BDNF, all those good things that yep. occur that, with the intermittent fasting. Well, let me talk about that for a second because you're a good guy to talk about that with. So um, if people would just you, – you put a lot. There's a lot to unpack in what you just said. But if people would literally just stop eating by 7 p.m. at night yeah, and do 30 days of no food after 7 p.m. at night and, like you said, go to bed at 10 o'clock, 9.45, 10.30. Amazing things happen. Oh, my God. It, I mean, I mean, like you said, I mean, we know that our bodies are designed to uh, work and eat during the daylight hours. And yeah. at, sleep, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, at sleep, we are designed to sleep and we are not designed to digest fucking food while we're laying there at night. And that's 90 percent of people in the workforce. Dude. Amazing things are happening at night, you know, between 10 yeah. p.m. and 4 a.m., that little gland in your brain is secreting all kinds of growth <laughs> hormone, right? And that growth hormone has a short window of time to yeah. do what it does, which is the opposite of insulin. It's it's liberating triglyceride to be used as energy. And uh, you're not taking advantage of that if you're going to bed in a fed state. Uh, there's just a lot of amazing things that happen. Regeneration, recuperation, restorative things that are happening to the body in the middle of the night. And study after study has shown that 
if there's one thing that you want to do to help reverse insulin resistance and change your weight and the way your body shape besides exercise is getting that good sleep yeah and following a sleep schedule we're solar beings we move with the sun yeah, these receptors right. in the front of our heads you know send signals back to hypothalamus pituitary to either start or stop certain hormones and then fasting eating inside that nice window and one of the things that i like to work with in, with my clients is understanding that at nighttime when they'll say, oh, but I get so hungry at 9, right. 10 o'clock. Right, 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 right. It's like, well, what's happening to the body at that time? It's gearing down. It's getting ready for rest. Cortisol levels are at its lowest. And you're misinterpreting the signals the body is sending you. Those signals are telling you not to eat. It's telling you go to go to bed. It's time to go to bed and rest. Not That's right. fill yeah. that hole in front of your face with another, you know, cupcake <laughs> i'll tell you this so i mean we got sick you know obviously last week and then the last couple nights last night was horrible but um i go to bed at 9 30 dude and it's weird because like i'd always been a night owl you know i'd always go to bed 11 11 30 i get some of my best work done writing and stuff at night but now i don't do that anymore because like i'm living according to that rule you know, Monica usually will make food at like six o'clock and at the latest I'll eat it at six 30 and I'm done by seven 15. You know, we walk the dogs for a good 30 to 20, 40 minutes. You know, it's kind of like her and I bonding and the dogs in the neighborhood and like crazy Thor, you know, barking at everybody. We laugh. And, uh, and then we come back and, you know, she usually will read a book. Sometimes I'll do like actually a set of cardio, uh, you know, a session on my bike and then I'll get into my, um, infrared and sweat my balls off, take a shower and go to bed. But it's so true. Like, I mean, I mean, there's so much about that idea of the body's circadian rhythm. And like you said, we're solar beings and, you know, living by that. And, and you're right, man. Like the average person slaves all day. They come home, they go to the gym if they go to the gym. And then by the time they eat, it's 845 at night. And, you know, a lot of these guys, as you know, they're omads, right? One meal a day, bro. And then they're pounding like 1,500 to 2,000 calories, Rob, in one seating between 9 and 9.30. And they're in bed an hour later, and they're laying there with just gut bomb, mm -hmm. their food attempting to digest, and it's just horrible. Yeah, I get a lot of these guys with reflux issues. And oh, that's, from, issues that's what it's and, from. Uh, you know, coughing due to reflux. It, some of the unhealthiest people I see are always the night shift workers, the ones yeah. working 6P to 6A. Yeah. And a lot of them are pilots, um, you know, UPS, FedEx, ABX, flying in yep. the middle of the night, going yep. east coast, west coast. They're up in the middle of the night trying Horrible. to stay. Trying to Horrible. stay. And what do they do when they got a full four or five hour flight? Shove more food in and, and caffeine. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. They'll be in the worst health. The amount of obesity, insulin resistance, uh, you know, diabetes that I see. You know, gearing up pre pre diabetes is pr pretty uh, universal. Let's talk, let's talk a little bit about drugs, newest stuff. Um, have you used, uh, yourself or with any of your patients test of yet? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Dude, no. it's amazing. Like literally it is my, I mean, you gotta get some, you gotta, <laughs> I, I mean, it's, it, it's the only med that I've ever taken and I've cold turkey myself. So I started using it in February. I got a video going out on Thursday night about this, but I call it my goat. So it's, mm -hmm. It increases uh, BDNF. Uh, it, it's a metabolic uncoupler, but it has no, you know, it's not increasing heart rate. Um, it's yeah. not, it's, it, it, it's like very subtle. But Rob, since I started using it, and Monica's been using it too, and we got it from South Lake, uh, we're so lean. And, I mean, I mean, it is, it is. I think there was somebody like maybe two years ago, year and a half ago that wanted it. And I, dude, I wrote, it's only been it. out like, in the world from a standpoint of like studied and understood from a science basis and, and, you know, three years of clinical data, like six, eight months. I mean, I mean, the guys, you know, the guys, uh, Mark, Michael and Carlos, yeah. and Rudy, Rudy wrote the script for me and they sent it to me and me and Monica, we've been using it, but it's good stuff. Dude. Generally what I personally have kept with is metformin XR. Yeah, no, or, I mean, all of that stuff is great, but I'm uh, telling you, man, you want to throw in yeah, because it, the, the GLP one and, you know, those are usually well, what about SEMA? What about SEMA glutide? What do you think about that? Uh, works really well. It's a great at suppressing appetite. Uh, people lose weight 
very quickly, usually two to three months of using it. Yeah. Um, you know, it does have some downsides. I can't use it with certain people with their professions because of what they do with like, they, they can't be on that particular medication. Um, I don't, no, I don't explain that. Explain that. So I understand that. Uh, well, the potential for hypoglycemia, ah, so right. they can't be riding around in a cruiser or sure, flying sure, a plane sure, and sure, worry sure. about getting low blood sugar. Right, right, right. That would right. be bad. I got it. I got it. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, there's certain individuals like, yeah, they can use it, but they can only use it. In their but body. isn't that, I mean, from a side effect standpoint, isn't that more dose related than anything? Mm-hmm. Like the, you know, yeah. Like I'll start a lower dose, like 0. 0.5 yeah. for two to three weeks yeah. and move it up yeah. to, uh, to one and, you know, so, and it can be dose related. It's, it's pretty effective stuff. Oh, definitely. it works great. Yeah. It's one yeah. of my favorites for sure. Yeah. Um, what about the other ones though? It'd be interesting like, to see what the data boards out with its use in Parkinson's that that's well, what, well, what do you think about? Cause I'm not familiar with them, but the other ones that are like the, com- the competitors to SEMA, I think it's Lyra and maybe another one or whatever, like the shorter acting ones. Are you familiar with those? Mm. No, I keep to a pretty tight profile of, of yeah. what works and, and, uh, yeah. I don't are like you, to try to rebuild the wheel. <laughs> well, I mean, like when you give a guy SEMA, are you also having him do metformin at the same time? One or the other. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 It, 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 I, I, I generally metformin will not cause incidents of hypoglycemia. Exactly. I, I think I've only seen it maybe like once. Right. Maybe twice. Right. right. Um, uh, semaglutide. I've had a couple of those where they've gotten a little shaky. They've gotten neuroglycopenic symptoms and um, neuroglycopenic. I love that. You know, they get the shaky, the sweaty, feeling like a little getting the tunnel vision. Tasmanian devil. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, so, um, damn, I was just going to ask you on that. So, somebody asked me the other day, you're perfect to answer this because I was like, that's an interesting question. Um, they're using Met and they're using their glucometer, which you know we were going to talk a little bit about it, and and their their you know their their glucose monitor thing, whatever you want to call it, and yeah, they're like I'm not seeing actual suppression. You know, my A A one C is staying from like five point one to five two. I'm not fat. I'm not inflamed, mm-hmm. but I'm not actually seeing a suppression from metformin. But I'm getting good results from it. You know, is there is there a reason for that? Is it certain people just you won't see that with metformin? Or I mean, what are your thoughts on that? So, uh, and it's going to run case by case, you know, yeah. individual to individual. It, a five one five two on your hemoglobin A one C is well controlled, right? And, and it usually is going to hover about there. Occasionally, you have one of those natural people. Was. There's like four nine five zero. Right, right. I right. put you on testosterone. It's going to go sub five. Of course, it's going to yeah. go sub five. Right. So you want to collect correct insulin resistance, testosterone cream, and a versa brace, hydrogel. I can reverse insulin resistance as long as you're not eating really, really crappy uh fairly quickly um as as far as the um glucose monitoring i I love using the devices more as an educational tool right uh when it comes to food choices so big comparisons you you put the glucose monitor on and have them eat different food groups so what is it what does your body do when you eat white rice versus brown rices versus basmati rice what happens when you eat bread what happens when you have a pancake experiment bread. and see what it does and uh for example i love pancakes i gotta yeah be you, but that's really so bad every once in a while i'll put my continuous glucose monitor on you know slap one on the arm and yeah. i like the lifestyle libre or freestyle libres and, yeah i have um, that and uh you know it's interesting i always feel really good after i eat thin crust naples style pizza right so just out as, as you know, personally, let me eat one of those pizza. Let me eat Domino's just to see what it does. Oh my right? God! What so I would if, if I eat Domino's, my my blood sugars stay elevated for thirty six hours. Oh my God! If dude. I eat uh, uh, over at Dorothy Lane Market, get a Naples style pizza. It's a certified oven, done Naples while the yeah. dough and the whole bit. Thirteen Doesn't hours. Spike. Thirteen hours. 13 right? versus 36. Wow. Yeah. So, that, so, so those are the, like the differences that you'll see and you're like, well, if I'm going to have pizza, which one am I going to eat then? Right. Um, and then there's other ones that I'll go get that have the thicker crust and it's like, it's 72 hours. Well, well, well here's what's higher. crazy. So I've been looking at a lot of these on, you know, Instagram, a lot of the influencers, that's the big thing now is the, you know, testing every food. Mm-hmm. And, you know, healthy foods, keto foods, you know, carnivore foods, you know, again, certified or whatever. And dude, 
it goes way back to like what Jim Brown, you know, said way back when, like, if God didn't make it, you probably shouldn't, <laughs> shouldn't fucking eat it. eat it. Yeah. I mean, I'm serious, man. Like all of these foods that are, you know, again, processed in one way or the other, again, you know, certified carnivore, certified keto, you know, cause again, I've been watching these guys test them and bro, they spike these things. I mean, they're garbage. You know, continuous glucose monitors are a great way. Use it for a month. It's a great way to see how different foods and different groups and what they do to your body. What happens when you eat watermelon versus blueberries and strawberries? Right. And you can see how your body reacts. You'll be able to pick out. And most people eat the same seven to nine foods their entire life. That's true, dude. So it's really easy to look at. These are the things that I eat the most of. And what do they do to my body? And what is – what? What does if I have a, a particular dessert I like, say for example, yeah. Uh, yeah. a chocolate lava cake versus a rice krispie treat? You know, <laughs> I mean, we've all had them, but which one actually does my body respond to in not a good way? Are you using therapeutic peptides? Are you a new user? Maybe an advanced user? Maybe you're considering starting peptides? Highly recommend going to the link right below the peptidescourse.com forward slash ten dash mistakes and download my PDF and learn what not to do before starting therapeutic peptides. I'm telling you, man, everything that is processed, no matter what they say oh. about it is fucking poison. It, it, you, I, I mean, your body spikes with it and, and you're right. I mean, like, we're not going to lie. Like I love granola. Like I won't eat cereal anymore. Just don't eat flax. Like I won't eat cereal <laughs> anymore. I, seriously, I will not eat cereal anymore because it literally kills me. There's so much glyphosate and atrazine, you know, in the cereal, you know, yeah. General Mills. Um, and now there's this new granola. I don't know if you've seen it at Costco yet. The 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 cupcake granola. Have you seen that? Yet? <laughs> no cupcake flavor. So good. I mean, it's, that's what the flavor is. It's not actual cupcakes. It's granola. I mean, it, you know, it's no GMO. But I mean, like, I ate that with it, and I'm like, oh. <laughs> but i crash, mean it tastes so good right like, crash you, your system it's a guilty yeah, pleasure yeah it, you know if it doesn't hit my lips i'm good you know my latest thing has been blueberries and strawberries it's just my, i'm on my blueberry and strawberry it's so funny I you said uh, watermelon I, oh my god dude. oh it's full of sugar absolute like you might as well just get yeah. mainline white table sugar <laughs> right right you know the, the the one bad thing that did like i, I did pick up a bad habit post covid and, and it was because it was the only thing I could taste. And I'd lost so much weight. I, I mean, I lost a lot of muscle, but I dropped 22 pounds. Have you actually been on my show and told people that you were literally in a hospital bed about COVID? I don't think you have. I mean, I, I don't think we talked me. about my my COVID journey, which was not fun. I, there was there was four days there. I you was, thought you were going to go bye-bye, uh, right? Yeah. I made my peace and made my peace. That is absolutely just, unbelievable, is man. Yeah, I remember you texting me, telling me that you were in hospital with COVID. I'm like, what? I remember showing Monica. I was like, look at this. And she's like, what can we do? And I'm like, I don't think we can do anything. Dude, well, we should probably do a show and I'll, I'll, we can go through the whole thing. But yeah, there was, I was day six and I was trucking along. I had no respiratory symptoms whatsoever and was trucking along. And day six, I, I was monitoring uh, O2 sats, heart rate. And my heart rate started picking up. My O2 sat dropped just a little bit, a couple points. It was sitting at 95. And then I woke up at 4 o'clock in the morning on day six, and it was at 82. Jesus. It just plummeted. And I woke up, my fingers were all blue. And I How do you think like, you got it? Do you think it was from a patient, or do you think you were just like, just natural walking no, around? No, this, this is back in November last year. I know. But, I remember. Yeah, we should probably do an episode, and I'd give the details. But I had some crazy things happen. Crazy. But I did have three, three, three to four there really difficult days, and I made my peace with like if uh, if this is it, I'm okay. You texted okay. me; I was on the end list. <laughs> but dude, I gotta ask you though, because um, I'm I'm always asking people this now because I'm really trying to put this together. But were you flying or traveling right before you got it? I was in Dallas two weeks before for AMMG, mm -hmm. dude. I, 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 and, I, and I, here's I'm the thing convinced. we traveled, right. And I, it, it was starting to get bad and I was already seeing, I started getting patients in mid October and I started losing people quickly, right. which in round one, two, and three, I only lost one person. Right. And in <laughs> the fourth round, which started in October of 2021, 
they and it was healthy middle-aged males like right. 35 to 55 about. started dropping like flies and they would get sick and go downhill fast it was almost like something was made to kill healthy men well the question because i was not having that problem with women but you know the guy that i did the podcast with yesterday whose name who you know whose name will be not mentioned right now because he was like look bro he's like let's talk about that he's like the people that are getting it are the ones that are not awake right so it's like don't think that they're trying to kill off the people that they want getting it so it's like what what, what is going on on this planet right it's like everything is an inversion and i started thinking about that i was like fuck you're right so it's like dude he was saying that his his best guess is what me and monica have right now is what all of the quote unquote non veed people are going to get this fall and winter and he's like it's going to be fucking ugly He's like, because I'm telling you, dude, I had this and it was the sickest I've ever been in my life. My temperature, I don't know if you had this. I was 103.6 and then down to 94 in a matter of 25 minutes. I was shaking, shivering and sweating, shaking, shivering, sweating. I'd lay on the ground. My body was in aches. I was like, oh my God, this is a nightmare, you know? And I mean, again, I don't know what it is. It's not monkeypox. I don't have blisters. It's, it's clearly some new variant. Now I've talked to a lot of clinicians like yourself in the last week who have been telling me that they have had patients who are literally deathly sick, mm -hmm. you know? So, I mean, I would assume that this is the next thing. And, you know, now we're going into again, cold weather environments over the yeah. next three to I four think months. it'll, it'll, it'll get quiet for a little bit. And then I think it's going to rev up in October again. Yeah. Yeah. And well, then, it's already happening. I mean, like, you know, this like is said, why, but this was last year about the same thing. We started to get a little rush, then it calms down a little bit. Then it comes, And then it was October. It, took off and yeah. uh you know that's when we just got obliterated in this area right yeah yeah um last question maybe just on peptides versus growth hormone like you know are you seeing like well, like what are your thoughts on it right now like and i'll put it in a way that you can answer it you know it's obviously very difficult you can't get tessamorel now it's gone you know unless you have a script for uh a grifta uh you know it's even harder and harder to get uh, peptides now. I mean, is it a safer if you can get, you know, growth hormone, clinical grade growth hormone at this point? Is it a lot safer than getting, than going down the peptide route for an aging, you know, for someone looking for anti aging? Um, yes. So, you know, human growth hormone is not a controlled substance, it, it just needs to be used appropriately in right. the correct surgically. Individual. Right. No, right. Is it something for everybody? No. It yeah. isn't. Um, I test patients to screen, you know, I screen them for insufficiency deficiency and use it appropriately. And if you're microdosing growth hormone to replace deficient levels, you'll do really well. It's amazing. Yeah. It's, it's easy to get, right. It's not right. difficult to get. There's plenty of it out there. Yep. Um, the only part that's prohibitive really is the cost. It shouldn't cost what it does. It's the right. same pla uh, plasmid yeah. technology they use to, make uh in insulin so yeah it, it shouldn't cost what it does but it does yeah so um it, and it really works miracles uh it does it, yeah. and there's some there's some good studies for uh using uh growth hormone post-covid for recovery absolutely and, and i have and it works yeah because yeah. the, the the brain inflammation right uh, muscle wasting that you see um and the complete lack of energy and chronic fatigue it really microdosing growth hormone post covid works wonders uh and i've seen a lot of recovery see a lot of hormone dysfunction post covid thyroid uh hair hair loss injuries. oh my god the hair that I'll, i just got my hair cut the other day and my hair dresser sue she's like your hair is about like 90 percent back she goes i couldn't believe how much awesome. fell off your head and uh, yeah, I was getting ready. I'm like, well, I might have to go by the way of Jay. And <laughs> 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 uh, Oxano, baby, I still oh, got hair. It, it's getting it thinner. Was, listen, it was falling out in clumps. Yeah, it was just like yeah. I could pull my hand. Well, I mean, so many women talk about that now. You know, I have so many clinicians that have told me it's they call it COVID hair. Yeah, literally. Yeah, yeah. And so what I've been running for that is uh, which works really well. Yeah, you know, getting all the other hormones working appropriately. But what I'm finding when I'm running intracellular nutrient levels is that everybody's depleted on vitamin C, glutathione, their biotin right. levels are down, their B levels are down. 
chromium is usually down um, and zinc and mag levels are usually bottomed out. So I, I'll run IVs on a weekly basis, vitamin C, zinc, magnesium, B100, IV push of uh, glutathione, biotin. Sometimes if there's a little bit of cardiac involvement, I'm using taurine IV as well to help recover people uh, post-COVID much quicker. It gets you feeling better a heck of a lot faster. So I didn't tell you, but we did the the super immune dr IV drip. So as mm -hmm. soon as we got sick, because I was supposed to speak, I didn't tell you this, but I was supposed to speak last weekend at the Lokonda thing with. Oh uh, yeah, I, I've heard something. About, yeah, 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 with yeah, Doctor well, Beaver and everything, and so I ended up doing my speak speech virtual, and it was amazing. I thank God on Saturday I actually had some energy. On Friday I was like telling him it's it's a game time decision. <laughs> I mean I was like fucking vertigo, but. uh but it's crazy, dude, because like, um, I, I, the energy, we got the IV on Tuesday and I felt absolutely amazing. You know, it was a massive glutathione, massive C. I mean, you know, it's everything mm -hmm. you need to push and both Monica and I felt really good. And Monica was actually not sick yet. She didn't actually get sick until Wednesday or technically like late Tuesday night. She started crouping, but dude, it didn't matter. I mean, I felt for six, eight hours after it, I was like, fuck, I'm, I'm cured. <laughs> right. I'm going to yeah, be I'm fine. Good. I'm going to yeah. be fine. And then, dude, I woke up Wednesday morning and I could not breathe. It was razor blade throat. And that's what I wanted to ask you before we end the show is like, is that part of the design of this thing? You know, because if you think about old people, right, when they go to sleep at night and they slow down and everything is like slowing down, like if their throat closes – can't swallow because of the razor blade. You would think that's how a lot of these you know, people would die. Everybody gets different runs on things. Um, some people get nasal congestion, yeah. sinus congestion, Ugh. sore throat, runny nose. Crazy, uh, I had no sore throat, no runny nose, no nasal congestion, no difficulty breathing until, boom, I had pneumonia in all five lobes. Um, and everyone's uh, course through it is been very different some people get the migrating muscle spasms and migrating yeah. pain and migraines and i've had people where their first symptom that something is off is they get migraines and, and their period starts yeah. abnormally earlier and yeah uh, the next thing you know they start developing fevers or a cough or no cough and everybody's been different um so there hasn't been any consistency definitely you know this summer with what yeah. I've seen, though it hasn't been like last summer, it's been a little quieter. Uh, but I'm anticipating it's probably going to get bad again. Yeah, I'm with you. Shortly. All right. So if uh, if somebody wants to, uh, you know, obviously consult with you, work with you, I know it's you're you're very specialized nowadays. But like, what's the best way for them to do that? Um, mm -hmm. Just get a hold of us at renew r e n u e health dot com. We're easy to find on the internet and. Um, you know, happy to work with people being definitely being selective at this point. Yep. Yep. For but sure. I mean, you're still working with all sorts of people from all over the world, right? Like mm -hmm. no, no issues. You can also email them guys at support at R E N U E health.com. Rob, it's always a pleasure. I love it. Likewise. You. Yep. Yeah. Um, so guys, again, renewhealth.com. This guy's one of the best doctors in the whole world, but you already know that that's why you're watching this show. So uh, support the amazing folks. So if you are watching this and you're not, you know, you're not as dialed as you could be. Again, look Dr. Rob up, go to renewhealth.com and remember, raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. We will see all of you guys very soon. Yeah.